Hi everyone and welcome to Frontend Joy in Ruby on Rails. Today we are going to explore how to improve our frontend workflow when developing Ruby web applications. My name is Maximo Mussini and I'm located in Colonia de Sacramento, Uruguay. I love open source and I'm the author of several libraries related to BJS, such as BitRuby and EOS. Before diving into what BJS can do, let's consider how web development has changed over the past 10 years. Back then, JavaScript was an early language with lots of other parts to avoid. Organizing your JavaScript code was a difficult task as the language didn't have any primitives to split code into modules. Bundling was about concatenating files, so ensuring a proper load order was the developer's responsibility, with some tools like Sprockets providing aid to avoid duplicates. In terms of development feedback, there was only one option. Reload the page to see any changes that you have made. Nowadays, JavaScript has improved a lot, with a more complete standard library and useful syntax sugar like lambdas and safe navigation. Tools like ESLint and TypeScript make it a lot easier to catch mistakes ahead of time. The introduction of a native module system has made it a lot easier to organize code and ensure it always loads correctly. In addition, since CSM can be statically analyzed, tools like Webpack and Roadapp have been able to implement sophisticated techniques, such as tree shaking and hot module replacement. Now we can see changes as soon as we save a file, without reloading the page, leading to a faster feedback cycle. And this leads us to BJS. BIT is the tool created to improve the development experience when developing web applications. So why BIT? Because it was built around the native module system, it's often faster than similar tools like Webpack, featuring a non-blocking server start and faster whole module replacement. Under the hood, it uses Rollup to bundle your application, applying tree shaking and chunk splitting. Bit also adds optimizations like CSS code splitting and preload directives, ensuring chunks are loaded in parallel. Bit provides most of the features that you'll need to develop your web application, such as integration with post CSS and CSS preprocessors, support for TypeScript and JSX, and official plugins for Vue and React. Bit also has excellent documentation and is friendly both for beginners and advanced users. Its extensible plugin system, inspired by Rollup, has allowed the community to create hundreds of plugins, covering tons of different use cases. From all the reasons that we discussed previously, the one that stands out to me personally is instant feedback. Let's take a look at a few examples to see what it feels like and get a sense of how hot module replacement and similar techniques can improve our development experience. For example, when editing CSS, changes will be pushed to the browser using WebSockets, replacing the previous style sheet with the new one. As a result, it becomes more enjoyable to iterate on a design and getting it to look exactly like you want. It's so fast that you can tweak from your editor instead of using the browser's dev tools. Unlike in traditional setups, in Beat you can use TypeScript without waiting for the compiler to run. Under the hood, ESPL is used to discard type annotations. This allows you to prototype quickly, like you would with plain JavaScript, and fix compilers later, before pushing your code. If you have used Webpack, this one should ring a bell. When working with frameworks like Vue or React, changes to a component will be applied without re-rendering other parts of the application, which is great for large apps. Vue in particular provides a fantastic experience by skipping re-renders if you only change styles and preserving local state if only the template has changed. This makes iterating in development very fast and enjoyable. As I mentioned before, Bit provides an extensible plugin system and has great documentation. This made it possible for me to implement a plugin to provide hot module replacement for stimulant controllers in only a few hours. Here, we have an example with two of one errors. Instead of reloading the page every time that we make a change to the controller, Bit will push changes to the browser immediately, allowing us to verify that everything is working as expected. Once you start using Bit, you quickly get used to seeing changes immediately. In my case, I wanted to see changes to Rails layouts and templates without having to manually reload the page. This prompted me to create another plugin. Although not as fast as HMR, it's still nice to have the page be reloaded for you after modifying a template or translation file. So, how can we leverage all these features in our Ruby applications? Bit Ruby is a project that enables full integration with Bit in Ruby web applications. The design of Bit Ruby shares a common thread with the design of EJS. I wanted to achieve a nice experience out of the box by providing strong conventions while at the same time allowing the user to opt out or tweak as needed. 
It supports frameworks like Rails, Hanami, and Jekyll, providing everything you need to get started with Vue. Typically, adding Vue Ruby to a new app is a one-line install. Let's cover some of the main features. Time helpers allow you to reference your files, injecting script and style tags. In development, Bit Ruby will proxy requests to the Bit Dev server, allowing files to be served on demand. It also provides a helper to inject a client script, which will connect through WebSockets to the Dev server, empowers the HMR features that we saw earlier. In production, the build is configured to output a manifest, which will be used to map original file names to the fingerprinted asset URLs. The manifest is also used to inject associated styles as well as to render preload tags for chunks in order to optimize load time. Autobuild is a feature in BitRuby that will automatically trigger a build if any from the files have changed since the last build. It ensures that build assets are always up to date when using tag helpers and it's really convenient for when running tests locally or focusing on backend work. In this mode, tag helpers will use the manifest to resolve asset URLs, just like in production. Last but not least, deployment. Following a convention present in most Ruby frameworks, BitRuby will extend the assets pre-compile task to build with Bit. It will also configure Bit to output files to the public directory, ensuring they can be served or uploaded to a CDN. BitRuby will use the configure asset host and configure Bit to use it as a base URL, ensuring that all assets are served from the CDN, even for dynamic imports. As a result, deploying with VRuby usually requires no manual configuration. So you might be wondering, how does VRuby compare to other tools that are available for Ruby on Rails? You can use Webpacker to achieve a similar integration with Webpack. I used Webpack for many years and it was a major inspiration for VRuby, so thanks. Now Webpack is powerful, but it can be difficult to configure it correctly and it takes time to understand it well. Raise your hand if you have seen a Webpack config that made you cringe. In Webpack, call stars are very slow because it needs to process the entire app, in contrast to the non-blocking bit server start. HMR is also slower than in bit, as an incremental rebuild is required on changes. The main problem is that it's proportional to the size of the app and its dependencies. In large projects, call star can take minutes and HMR can take several seconds, which becomes painful. There are plans to circumvent some of these performance issues but that just emphasizes how difficult it is to get a good setup. JS bundling and CSS bundling. These two libraries are new solutions to bundle JS and CSS in Rails, and they work by watching files and rebuilding on changes, requiring two separate processes if you're using both. Compared to Webpacker and BitRuby, they are lower level tools, requiring manual configuration to get started. The main downside is that they don't support HMR, so even when using one of the faster options like ESBelt, you will still need to do a full page reload to see changes. And finally, import map rails, which allows you to define import maps using a custom DSL for pinning URLs. Its main advantage is that it doesn't require Node.js, which can be really convenient for small apps and certain deployment setups. The trade-off is that build optimizations like tree shaking are no longer possible, making it less efficient in production than a bundled counterpart. Also, major browsers like Safari and Firefox don't support import maps yet, and the polyfill requires native ESM support. In contrast, Bit has an official plugin to output code that can support browsers such as IA11. Finally, like with the previous option, it lacks support for HMR, so you need to reload to see your changes. In summary, none of these options can match the fast feedback cycle that Bit enables in development. With the exception of import maps, all other options are roughly equivalent to production creating an optimized bundle. BitRuby requires less configuration than Webpack and JS bundling rails, making it more friendly for beginners and developers that don't like configuring front-end tools. I'd also like to add that Bit benefits from a larger ecosystem, so there's usually more documentation and plugins available. To wrap up, I'd like to share a brief story about my journey with Bit. It all started back in 2021, before Bit had a major release. I decided to write a prototype in Rails that provided an integration similar to Webpacker. And it worked! Then, I extracted a Bit Ruby core and created integrations for Hanami and Padrino. Shortly after, Bit 2 was released. Over the past year, the ecosystem has matured, and Bit now has a CI that can run tests for frameworks and integrations to catch problems before releases. As a result, once Bit 3 was released, projects like Bit Ruby and EOS were able to ship a compatible release on the same day. 
I'm really grateful to see that this project has been useful to so many people and for all the contributions to improve it. And that's all folks. Thank you for watching. I'd like to thank the BeatCore team and its contributors. Also, this presentation was made using Slido.